Hi everybody, welcome to my dining room. The video today is going to be Newfoundland pea soup and doughboys. And I don't cook pea soup and doughboys very often, um, but I cooked it last weekend when we had a big storm and we had almost 90 centimeters of snow. Stay tuned at the end of the video because Barry's going to put in a couple of pictures and some bloopers because I'm having a hard time doing this intro. I'm not really sure why, but hopefully this one sticks. Because it was a snow day, I stayed in my nightie all day. So I wasn't really camera ready, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to show you guys how I make pea soup and doughboys. So before we get going, the base of the soup um, can be done several different ways. Uh, you can use water and salt meat. You can use Jig's dinner broth if you have any in the freezer, like I sometimes do, but I didn't that day, um, along with salt meat. Um, some people just use ham and a ham bone. Um, some people use a ham bone, ham and salt meat. Um, and other people, for example, vegetarians, this is a very easy uh, soup to make without meat. Um, you could use some veggie broth and, uh, you know, all the vegetables and the peas and it would be wonderful. So, I hope you enjoy it. I think I got through the intro. I think. Here we go. Enjoy. God bless. Okay, here we go. So step number one, of course, I have celery and onions. Now, if you don't have celery in the house, don't worry about it. I wouldn't bother going to the grocery store, but I do have it in the house and it does add a little bit to the soup. So I normally take about three large stocks and slice them down the middle and then dice them into little tiny pieces. Then, of course, you peel and uh, dice up your onion. Always remember uh, to use your claw fingers so that you don't cut yourself when you're doing your onions. Now, this time I used two onions because they weren't very big. Um, so, but if you have one large onion, that would do as well for your soup. So, of course, this isn't a recipe recipe because everyone's soup is a little different. So, if you don't like onion, leave it out. Uh, if you really, really like onion, put in a little bit more. Uh, but to each his own and it's all good. So we'll get the onion chopped up here now and diced and put it in with the bowl with the celery. And then we're going to get the turnip. Now, some people um, call turnip rutabaga. So depending on where you are, the what I'm calling turnip, you may call rutabaga. And what I call a rutabaga is the little teeny tiny turnips. <laughs> So whatever you have, whatever you like, if you don't like turnip, you don't like rutabaga, of course, you can leave that out. Um, but basically what I do, of course, is peel it and then slice it down um, in about no more than a half inch thick. And uh, oh, there you go. Daisy wants a little bit there. And then cube it up into little tiny pieces, probably no bigger than the top of your pinky. Um, now, if it was for stew, it would be in larger chunks. But in my soups, I like to have the vegetables chopped up a little smaller. So we'll put that in a bowl. And now we will get our carrots going. So, of course, our carrots are peeled and you take off the two ends. What I normally do then is slice it in half and then slice the half in half lengthways because I'm looking to make smaller, little smaller pieces of turnip. And of course, dice that up, remembering to use your cloth on your other, fing other hand so you don't slice your fingers. There we go. And then the bigger end, um, I'll slice that in half lengthways as well. And depending on how big it is, I might then slice it in half lengthways again, as I did here. Or if it's really big, I'll actually slice it down lengthways twice. So the carrots are all roughly the same size and therefore they would cook evenly. Now, if I didn't have turnip and I didn't have celery, I would probably add extra carrots and uh, maybe even some extra onion. So here we go, we have our ham steak. We didn't have a ham bone or anything today. So uh, we're gonna use a couple of ham steaks that you can buy at the grocery store or leftover ham if you happen to have any. 
Um, and here I'm just taking the rind off the ends. It is edible. I just don't like the texture of it. So then you can put your ham on top of each other. And then we're going to slice that into little cubes similar in size to the turnip and the carrots. So in the package that I bought, there was two slices. And here you can see ham steak. But like I said, if you've got any kind of leftover ham, you can certainly use that as well. And these ends, of course, are going to go to Daisy because, like I said, they are edible. And the ham does add an awful lot of flavor to the soup. Um, if I don't have ham, though, like I said before, I will just use salt meat. But the ham really, really does add a pile of flavor. So make sure you have a nice sharp knife. And as you can see, I've got the ham uh, piled on top of each other. And basically like the turnip, I'm going to take that after I give these ends to Daisy. I'm going to take that and slice it up into the little cubes for the soup. There we go. Make sure you have a sharp knife or this is going to go everywhere. And if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can do each slice at a time, not a problem. As long as it gets done, that's perfect. It doesn't have to be done exactly the way that I do it. Make sure you watch your fingers. So we're gonna put that aside in a bowl. And then we're gonna get out the salt meat. So it's very, very important when you're making pea soup to use a heavy bottom pot. Um, here's the salt meat. I'm just going to trim off, trim off the fat. We don't need the extra fat in there. And there's probably a bone in that piece of salt meat. So I'm going to trim the meat off around the bone, dice that up like I did the ham. But the bone will go in the soup because it will add flavor. But of course, you want to fish that out before you serve it. So as I was saying, you need a heavy bottom pot. Now I'm using a, a cast iron um, baked enamel pot, which is quite heavy. Oh, and here is the snow on the day that I'm making the soup. And there's the snow in the window. And there's the snow outside. We had almost 90 centimeters. Good heavens. But anyway, back to the soup. So we have our carrots and turnip, we have our onions and celery, we have our nice, heavy, uh, well used, as you can see by the color of the pot. It is clean, um, but very well used and very much loved. Uh, this pot is cast iron, baked enamel, and that's what we are going to use to make our soup. So the heaviest bottom pot that you have uh, would be the best thing to use. Now this is gonna make a fair amount of soup. So when you're making your soup, if you're making a smaller pot, obviously you can cut back on the amounts, including the amount of peas that we're gonna put in in a minute. So I'm just warming up the pot there now, putting in a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. Um, doesn't have to be olive oil, whatever oil you have on hand, or even a little bit of butter. Here I am pouring up my cranberry juice. It's getting pretty thirsty. There we go. And we're going to wait for the pot to heat up a little bit. And then we're going to add in our uh, onions and celery all together. And I'm going to throw in a couple of bay leaves. That adds a little bit of extra flavor as well. If you don't have bay leaves, don't worry about it. It's not a necessity. And I'm not going to salt these because we're going to get salt from the ham and from the salt meat. So you don't want to over salt it. And there I lied to you. I did put a little bit of salt in with the onions and the celery because that helps draw out the liquid from, from those as you're, as you're frying them up. Now we're not looking to brown this. We're just looking to soften them a little bit um, before we add in some more ingredients. I do find that that makes a difference in the soup, especially with celery. I don't want to crunch into a piece of celery when I'm eating my soup. I like the onions and the celery to be nice and soft. And you also see the black pepper, there's the bay leaves, and the Worcester soft sauce off to the side. We'll be adding that in as well in a little bit. 
Can't remember if I got that on camera or not. But of course, the Worcester sauce is optional. Uh, but if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I really, really like Worcester sauce. And I do put it in my soups and my stews, including chicken soup, believe it or not. So we're going to stir that a little bit. Let that get nice and soft, but we don't want it to brown. And then we are going to add our ham and our salt meat, which has all been chopped up. So here we go. Give it a stir, make sure it's not sticking to the bottom or burning. And there's the ham and the salt meat. And those two big chunks, those are the two bones that were in the salt meat. So we're just gonna render down some of the salt out of uh, that and continue to fry up the onions and the celery until they get nice and soft. Now, meanwhile, I have my kettle on and my kettle holds a little more than one liter of water. So rather than waiting for this to come up to a boil, uh, we are going to add boiling water. Now here's the peas. Um, it's a fairly large bag of peas. Uh, depending on how thick you want your soup to be will depend on how many peas that you put in. So if you like uh, a thinner soup, I would put in half a bag. If you like a thicker soup like I do, then I would put in the full bag. Or if it's a different brand, in a smaller bag, I'd put in two bags. So we're just gonna put in the one liter of or one kettle of boiling water, because if you're trying to bring this to a boil, there's a chance that you may burn your peas and you don't wanna do that because that, that taste of the burnt will go right through your soup and you don't want that. So we'll give that a stir, there we go. And all the peas at the moment are at the bottom. But of course, as they start to cook, you'll be able to see them and they will start to dissolve. And once they're all dissolved and your pea soup is like one consistency, then you know, and of course your vegetables are cooked, then you know your pea soup is done. Now over this course, I did end up adding four one liter kettle full of boiling water. So the peas do absorb a lot of water. And of course the vegetables do as well. So in go the carrots and the turnip. Now that our peas are starting to dissolve a little bit, you could put those in earlier with the meat, but what will happen is, cause this is gonna simmer for minimum of two hours, maybe even three. There I go with another Another thing of a kettle full of boiling water. But if you put your carrots and your turnip in sooner, uh, they have the tendency then to dissolve into the soup, um, which is still delicious, but not necessary. But if you, if you like that, you can certainly add your carrot and your turnip earlier. Okay, now my soup is ready. So now we're gonna make dough boys. Now the dough boys call for two and a half cups of flour and two teaspoons of baking powder. Oh, looks like I'm going for three teaspoons of baking powder, but that's okay. Two and a half to three cups of flour. It also called for one tablespoon of butter, but you know what? I like butter and it's not going to hurt the dough boys at all all. So I've got my little food processor there and I'm going to put some of the flour and baking powder mixture in the food processor along with the butter and I'm going to use a quarter cup um, and then pulse it just a couple of times to blend in the butter with the flour to make it crumbly. Now if you want to do this with your hands or you want to do this with um, like a fork you can certainly go ahead I just like using the little food processor. It's handy, it's on my counter. It's not a problem. Now the difference between a dough boy and a dumpling, because they're very similar, is that a dumpling tends to be sweeter. A dough boy does not have any sugar in it. Now, of course, you know, maybe aunt so-and-so, you know, puts a spoonful of sugar in her dough, her dough boys. That's not a problem, it's all good. 
Um, but in my experience, the doughboys are a little heavier than a dumpling and not sweet, whereas a dumpling is a little lighter and fluffier and there's a sweetness to it. So there we go. Just pulse that a couple of times. And put that back in with the, the rest of the flour. And then we'll give it a good stir to make sure it's all combined. Now we're going to give it a stir, like I said. Now, meanwhile, of course, the soup is simmering. And the soup is already thick. So if you, when you put in the dough boys, Sorry, here we go. We're going to make a well in the middle of the flour and we're going to add approximately one cup of milk. Now, when you're stirring your dough boys, you're not looking for like a cake batter. You're looking for a very rough, a little bit dry batter. You're not looking to be like totally combined or um, totally uh, wet. So it's a very rough batter for the dough boys. There we go. But the soup, if you want your soup to be thick and your soup is already thick, before you put your dough boys in, add some more boiling water because the dough boys are going to soak up fluid, liquid from the soup and make it even thicker. And the thicker it is, the more chances it will burn. So if it's, if it's right there, that's, that's pretty thick there now. Of course, when you stir it up, See how thick it is? Oh my God, that looks so good. There's the bay leaf floating around. There we go. So give it, a, if that's the thickness that you like, add about a half a kettle more before you start putting in the dough boys. Now you don't have to use a scoop. I'm just using a scoop because it's convenient and I have one, but you can just take like a kitchen soup spoon um, and take a spoonful and plop it in there with the dough boys. Of course, the smaller they are, the quicker they'll cook. So you want, you know, at least a couple of tablespoons uh, big when it goes into the soup. Now you want to turn your burner down to low. Of course, you can see that my soup is simmering quite nicely, but when I put the lid on, I need to turn it down to low or your soup may burn. Because once all these dough boys are put in the soup, then we're going to put a heavy cover on the pot heavy bottom heavy cover is key and then we're going to let it sit for fi at least 15 minutes if not 20 minutes depending on the size of the dough boys that you put in the soup and do not remove the cover if you peek then it will re it, the steam will come out of the pot and your dough boys will take even longer but do not remove the cover for at least 15 minutes there we go. We'll get them all in there. This makes a lot of a lot of dough boys, but it's okay because this is a lot of soup. And like I said, I don't make it very often, but it is delicious. There we go. We got them almost all in. Now, when you take the lid off and you go to stir the soup after your dough boys are taken out. Be careful not to scrape the bottom of the pot just in case there's a little bit burnt and you don't want that flavor to go through your soup. So just gently stir your soup and make sure you don't scrape the bottom of the pot if it's burnt. The tendency is, of course, to get all that up, but if you do, the taste of the burnt will go through the soup. Now, here we go. Here we go. 15, 20 minutes and ta-da! Oh my God, that looks so good. So, so good. And there is my Newfoundland pea soup and dumplings. Delicious. So you can either take out all the dough boys like I did and then uh, or you can, you know, have people go to the pot and pick up their their soup. And there it is. Thick, 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 thick. I love, love thick pea soup. And there you go. That's what we had for supper.
and I made it in my nighty because we were all fudge. I was going to make some soup. So instead of fudge, 